Hi, I'm Dave and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to take you through a deep dive of the artboard feature in Adobe Illustrator. Early on in my career using Adobe Illustrator, I simply ignored the artboard feature, even though it is an extremely powerful tool to add to your arsenal. If I needed to create a multi-page document, I was automatically jumping over into InDesign. And if I was creating a series of pieces in Illustrator, I would always have individual files for each piece in the series. Now, don't get me wrong. There's going to be situations where InDesign is the right tool to use. And for file management purposes, you're going to want to have individual Illustrator files. That being said, knowing the tools that you're using, all of the ins and outs and what they're capable of has the potential to make you a more efficient creator. And that's my goal here is to share these sorts of tips and tricks with you that I've picked up over my working career, show you what my process is, and hopefully you'll be able to add something to your arsenal. I would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button on this video, leave a comment, and if you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. The support really does mean a lot. Now, all that out of the way, let's go jump into Illustrator and take a look at the artboard feature. Okay, to be able to work with artboards, you're gonna to need to be able to add them to your documents. And there are a lot of ways to add artboards. The first way is via the new document window. Command N pulls up the new document window. And here we can add in artboards, any number of them that will fit on your canvas. So let's start off with four and hit create. We now have four equally sized artboards inside of our new document. The next two ways to add artboards to your document come from the artboard palette, which can be found up here in window, artboards, or in this case, I actually have it docked over here on the right hand side above my layer palette. Now inside of this palette, we can add a new artboard just by clicking this plus icon. This is just like adding a new layer inside of Illustrator but instead we're adding a new artboard. The third way of adding a new artboard is by copying an existing artboard. So this artboard has artwork on it already. And if we click on the name and then drag it down to the plus, we create a copy of that artboard. The next way to add an artboard to your document is with the artboard tool, which can be found in your tool palette over here on my screen. By clicking on it, we can now click and drag anywhere to create a new artboard and it can be any size just like using the shape tool if we hold down shift we'll constrain it to a square and our smart guides are going to show us there in the pink highlight when we are aligned with our existing size document again with the artboard tool and an artboard selected we can hit command c and command v and copy and paste in the artboard you can hit command v several more times and create as many copies as you'd like and then finally again with the artboard tool if you option click and you see that little ghost icon behind your pointer we can click and drag a copy of your artboard out then by letting go it finalizes it and then if we exit out of the artboard tool we now have a new copy of that artboard so that that's it. That's all of the ways that I know how to add artboards to your document inside of Illustrator. Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can edit the size of your artboards in Illustrator. The first way you can achieve the editing of an artboard is through document setup, edit artboards, and then up here we get the height and width. We can lock them so that the ratio stays the same or unlock them so that we can change the ratio. And by entering in a numeric value up here, we can change the size of our artboard. The next way to change the size of our artboard is with the artboard tool again. By clicking and dragging that, we can now have access to these handles, which are going to allow us to change the height and width and ratio of our existing artboards that are on the screen. Once you have a series of artboards set up, you may want to reorganize them. You can do that with the artboard tool. By clicking and selecting, we can drag these artboards around and find an order that we're happy with, a layout that we're happy with, that is conducive to the way that we're working. 
Instead of doing this manually, you can also do it via the artboard panel. If you go to the hamburger menu in the top right corner of the artboard menu, you're going to be able to rearrange all of the artboards. In here, we get a number of options. We can change the number of columns. We can change the spacing so we can space these out a significant amount if we want to have a little bit more of a gutter in between them. Make sure that you've got move artwork with artboard checked if you've got an existing document and you want to make sure that everything is moving around with the artboards as you select these options here. Another thing to consider if you have a large number of layers and maybe some of them are locked, maybe some of them are hidden, and you still want the artwork to move with the artboard as you move it, you may need to go up here into settings, selection and anchor display, and make sure that this option is checked on, move locked and hidden artwork with artboard to make sure that a locked layer isn't going to maintain the position of the artwork. Another note about rearranging artboards, if you rearrange the order of the artboards, that's going to change how the artboard exports in a multi-page PDF, for instance. So if you're working on a portfolio and you move an artboard up in the order, even though visually it doesn't change, the order in that page stack will. So you can update the way that your pages are displaying based on how you've got them organized here in your artboard palette just by hitting rearrange artboards. And even if you keep all your settings the same, they're now going to display in the correct order based on the order that you have them here. I keep series of artwork inside of a single document, but with their own artboards, just so that I can maintain elements, stroke widths, scale, just to make sure that that consistency is staying there. So here I've got my Mandala Animal series, and over here I'm working on a series of playing cards. I'm trying to develop the back of the playing cards, and I'm just working in the same document to keep everything together so that I can reference what I've done on previous iterations. Here's another example of how I've used artboards when working on YouTube thumbnails. I just want to make sure that my consistency is there. So each time I create a new video in this series, I'm adding a new artboard to this document, pulling the assets from the original. And then when I'm ready to export them, I can click on the artboard that I'm looking to create the JPEG for to upload. And I can go file, export, save for web, which is the legacy web export and I can set it to an 80% JPEG, which is good. And from here, I can save out this individual artboard from that entire document. In this case, I've got a series of different sized artboards, all containing the same content, but at these different social media sizes. If we pull up our artboards over here, we can see that I've got them labeled. I've got, a, I've got several standard size web banners, a couple social media posts. And this way I can keep everything all together in one document. And then when I'm ready to export these, I want them all to be exported at the same time. Instead of using the save for web feature, what I'll do here is the export for screens feature. Now in here, I can pick and choose which artboards I would like to export. I can choose which format I'd like to export them at. There's a number of presets here, so an 80% quality JPEG. You can change the scale since it's Illustrator and these are vector files. I can output them at a much larger size if I was looking for that. You can also export multiple sizes at the same time. So I can export the single or 1x size, and then I can export a 3x size at the same time. And then it will add 3x to the file name as it exports. You can also export JPEGs. So this is really handy if you'd like to export one JPEG and one PNG of the same file. So you are doing logos and you need to give different formats. This is a handy way of cutting down on all of that time processing multiple files. Here's another use case for using artboards inside of Illustrator. Instead of jumping into InDesign and trying to import all of these assets, they're quite simple. They don't need the complex page layout of InDesign. I can build a portfolio like this in Illustrator and then export a multi-page PDF by saying file, save a copy, navigating to where you want to save it on your computer, and then selecting a PDF from here. We can remove copy from the file name, 
hit save, and then you're gonna get a series of PDF options. So we can turn off preserve Illustrator editing cap capabilities. And since I have a number of raster based objects in here, I can also customize the downsampling. So if these images are a larger resolution than the actual canvas size, we can define what resolution we would like them to be and what compression we would like them to be. So JPEG, you can set high quality at 150 DPI and save a PDF that way so you can control your file size. One advantage of having multiple artboards inside of a document is being able to move assets from one artboard onto the other artboard. So obviously, if we click and drag it over, this piece, this shape, has moved from this artboard onto this artboard, and it doesn't need to be copied, it doesn't need to be pasted from one document to another. One of the things that you will want to consider is using the actual copy and paste feature. If this artboard is selected and we copy this shape from this artboard, and now we move to another artboard and we hit the paste in place or paste in front command of command F, the position is going to remain the same on this artboard. However, if you are on artboard two and you use a selection tool in this manner where you're clicking and dragging and selecting this shape, and we're now gonna copy it to our clipboard, if we try pasting it into a different artboard here with the same command, command F, the position isn't going to translate properly. It's important that when you are copying shapes from an artboard, that that artboard is actually active so that the position information is actually picked up and used in the manner that you were trying to.